Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Kent seminar. Let's start our session for, for today. Uh, today, we have Professor Joel Santos from the University of Twente in the Netherlands. Let me give you a short bio of him. So, Professor Joel Santos is an assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering and Management at the University of Twente in the Netherlands. He's a research member of the Assault Baby and Research Innovate, Innovation Network at UT. His research is dedicated to the application and advancement of industrial ecology and operation research methods and perspectives to understand and improve the life cycle sustainability performance of civil infrastructure systems. Professor Santos received his PhD in transportation systems from the University of Coimbra in association with the Technical University of Lisbon and the University of Porto in Portugal. During his graduate studies, studies, John Santos was a visiting scholar at the Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. And before joining the University of Twente, he was a postdoctoral researcher at the French Institute of Science and Technology for Transport, Transport, Transport Development and Networks, IFSTAR, in France. So let's all give a welcome, a warm welcome to Professor John Santos. And Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be uh, to be with you this afternoon, morning or night, depending on where you are. Uh, but I, I must confess that I feel that I'm in trouble because um, if you see the title of my presentation is uh, Life Cycle Assessment Applied to Road Payment Systems and almost all the previous speakers, they talk about LCA. So I feel that I don't have anything else to have, um, which for you, it's I think it's good because they did it in a way that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have done it in a better, but it puts me in a trouble position. In any case, I think I have to, to tell you something. So um, I will not ask you what the life cycle assessment is because I believe that you, at this stage, you already know it. And I will um, jump straight to the National Geographic moment of this afternoon. And I would like to ask you, um, uh, when and where was the first LCA study done? Any, any idea, any suggestion? 1960s. Yes, and uh, where? I think I heard the, the correct answer. Uh, it was commissioned by Coca-Cola. Actually, they were interested in assess the environmental impacts of their uh, packaging. So this is, uh, it was not the same LCA as we, as we know it today, but was the, the beginning. And since then, in the 70s, it has uh, evolved in terms of application. It was mainly in the energy sector due to energy crisis and oil crisis. Then in 80s, uh, it moved a bit to Europe. Uh, in the 90s, uh, the first journals on the topics uh, uh, were created. Also the, the first um, um, softwares and databases and um, in terms of our field, Perman LCA was only um, after uh, 2000 that it started to appear the first publication. So I did a, a quick search using uh, keywords that are related and I found uh, almost 300 publications. So the first one was journal publication. The, the first one was in 2007. Uh, but was actually uh, those two uh, well-known, after those two well-known publications by uh, Santero, that we start to see an increase, almost exponential increase of the number of publications. And, and of course, we also have the permanent LCI framework, which is not a journal paper, but it's the, the, the go-to reference uh, for permanent LCI. So what I'm gonna do um, 
in the next minutes. I will share with you uh, my perspective on the evolution of the, lit the literature according to four lands, uh, the icebergs, and I will explain you what I mean by icebergs, the emerging trends, uh, the challenge, and I will finish with, uh, with what, uh, what I think will be the immediate next steps. All right, challenge, uh, icebergs, uh, icebergs uh, it's, um, or are methodolog methodological decisions that the analysts uh, make that might lead to uh, misleading results. The first one, um, it's in my opinion, one of the most important is related to the functional unit. So you know that uh, the LCA comprises uh, four main uh, steps. And in the first one, the goal and scope definition, we have to describe the product system, the functional, functional unit, reference flow, and the system boundaries. The function uh, and functional unit and reference flows are the answers to three uh, main questions. The first one is what should the product do? In the case of payments, uh, it's allowed the movement of vehicles, or support traffic or uh, equivalent function. Then we have the functional unit. It should uh, give the answer to this question, how much function should be provided? This can mean uh, the quantification of the vehicles or also the quantity of uh, excels. And then we have the reference flow, which is uh, basically how much uh, product is needed to provide the function. And this is related to the dimensions of the, of the payment. So the first, uh, the first um, item, the function is usually described qualitatively while the last two um, are described or quantified in a uh, quantitative way. So the functional unit, if you read uh, the definition or the type of answer that it needs to, uh, to give, it implies uh, the consideration of performance specification attributes as well as the analysis period. However, what we see uh, commonly in the literature is that the functional unit is uh, one ton of asphalt mixer or one, uh, one square meter or a given payment structure and that is defined by default or it can be found also in manuals. So what is the problem with this? The problem um, might be the following, uh, what I'm going to illustrate now. So. In this study, uh, we were interested in assess the environmental performance of a payment structure, where in the base layer, uh, we um, have as an alternative asphalt mixers, um, a war mix asphalt to be specific, with different percentage of uh, um, reclaimed asphalt concrete. So we keep uh, all the, all the the other layers uh, with uh, the same thickness, and we use the results from the lab to design the payment structure that was uh, designed for um, uh, carry uh, five million isals during the service life of 10 years. We run the, the analysis and we got that the thickness um, increase as we also increase the percentages of uh, reclaimed asphalt concrete. So what it means in terms of environmental impacts and considering the global warming as an example, is that there is actually a, re a reduction when we change from the conventional uh, what mix asphalt to warm mix asphalt, but then the impacts increase as uh, we increase uh, the, 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 the percentage of reclaimed asphalt concrete. So the, the, the reason is that although there is actually a reduction in environmental impacts per ton, the fact that we need a more quantity of materials due to the, poor, the lower performance, the, real impact, the impacts will actually be greater than when we have the conventional mixture. 
So this leads to this important message is whenever possible, tie the LCA with the actual payment design. Of course, not always, not in all studies, this is possible, but at least you need to acknowledge and we need to mention this important aspect. Moving to the second iceberg, uh, also in the global, uh, global scope definition, we need to define the system boundaries. Uh, and taking as an example, the production of asphalt mixer, the building blocks are virgin aggregates, binder, and nowadays we can also say that wrap is quite common, uh, and also um, some sort of additives. It doesn't matter what it is, it's just a journal, journal additive. And most of the studies, they exclude the additives from the system boundaries uh, using as a reason it the fact that the quantity is very, is very low. It's usually 5% of the mass of bitumen, which in turn is already 5% of the mass of the total mixer. Again, the problem with this, what is the problem? So I'm taking as an example, this study by Ben Moss and colleagues, and they show that mixers with 40% of asphalt uh, binder replacement, not the rejuvenator, show a decrease of 30%, 20% of the environmental impacts when compared to those without, uh, without wrap. But after introducing rejuvenators, there was an increase of the environmental impacts by 20%. They also found that uh, the in the rejuvenated mixers, the contribution of the rejuvenator uh, uh, was particularly relevant uh, and the, their contribution could, cha could change between two and 26%. Of course, there are uncertainties uh, related to this. So as you can see here, the fact that um, the environmental impacts related to, the, to the, the production of the rejuvenators is considered, it can change uh, completely or to a great extent the results. Of course, we also need to account for the eventual uh, gain in terms of performance. But this uh, only uh, leads me or reinforce the previous point that I, that I made is that considering the performance as part of the, 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 the definition of the functional unit is, is quite important. And this avoids uh, what, we have, what we have here is misconception about what is clean and, uh, and not clean. My third iceberg uh, are the deterministic analysis and or one at a time sensitivity analysis. So let, let me take a, as an example, uh, the paving operation, uh, lay down one square meter of asphalt concrete for a mix for a layer with a given thickness, it doesn't matter for, for the case. So it, let's assume that this, uh, all the equipments will uh, consume this amount of diesel. This, those are not realistic values, of course, but the, I use them just to illustrate, to pass the message. And they will emit um, 557 kilograms of CO2. So what is the problem with this? The problem is that that is not true value for the consumption of diesel. This, this value is a, a realization of a stochastic variable. And the same goes for the emission of CO2. Uh, there is also not a true value for this, um, uh, for this quantity. And even the actual amount of uh, uh, mixer or the area that is laid down, it, it, it will not be one for sure. It will not be one one square meter, it might be 0 0.98 or 1.001. However, what we find, what we find commonly in, in, in several uh, payment LCA studies is that they ignore the certainties or they just mention them briefly in the discussion or conclusions. Um, they can sometimes perform a few scenarios analysis where they, they change the value of one per meter, or let's say we change the, the, the type of fuel that is consuming the asphalt plant from um, heavy fuel to natural gas. 
or as I said before, uh, uh, one at a time sensitivity analysis is done. And even <laughs> sometimes we found results with several uh, decimal digits. So imagine that um, a permanent life cycle comprises uh, different, uh, uh, different phases, uh, which one of those phases uh, encompasses different unit process similar to the one that I that I showed before, you can clearly see or easily see that there are a lot of uncertainties involved um, in the analysis. In addition to the certainties related to, to the modeling of uh, the payment life cycle itself, there is also uncertainties related to DLCA. And we can divide them in three main categories. We have uncertainties in the, the quantity or uncertainties in the quantity, which is basically um, they emerge from the inaccuracies in the input data, mainly uh, used during the inventory and also the impact assessment. We have uncertainties uh, related to the models um, due to the mismatch between um, the fact that we are modeling the real world and uh, the system that it represents but also due to the structure and the mathematical uh, relationship of those models. And this can be found during the inventory analysis and also during impact assessment. And finally, we have uncertainties related to the context or scenario. This has to do with the normative choices that the analyst uh, uh, does during the goal and scope and definition, but also the, the other two steps. So in my opinion, a better way to uh, actually perform analysis, the LCA, is to embed it or include it in a certainty analysis framework that comprises the identification of the, the certainties, uh, the characterization. It's commonly, this is done using uh, probabilistic distribution functions. Then you have the propagation. Uh, the most common method is the sampling, but it can also be uh, done with uh, uh, analytical methods. And then the global sensitivity analysis. And finally, the communication, which can be based on the discernibility analysis. So just to give you an, an example how it works, how, how it can work. And the, in this case, we compare uh, uh, two uh, mixers that were used in a mill and fill maintenance and rehabilitation uh, in the here in Netherlands. Those are Zoab. It's a type of uh, porous asphalt which is uh, quite common in our roads. We follow the the several steps uh, that I described uh, previously, but instead of uh, Monte Carlo simulation, we use a lot in hypercobalic sampling. And we also consider three types of sensitivity, global sensitivity analysis method, uh, which in addition to the Sobel, which is the most common, we also use uh, uh, Exotrees and Palm, machine learning based methods. And this is the results that we, those are the results that we got. And as you can see, the, there is here some overlapping between uh, the two outcomes. So if you fall in this, um, in this category, actually this mixer can be better than this one. This is, slightly, this is completely different from a situation where you only have one single value for uh, the environmental performance of the, the two uh, mixers uh, under comparison. And when we uh, also couple this with a global sensitivity analysis, you can know uh, exactly what is the contribution of the several parameters to the total uncertainty. In my opinion, this gives us a more realistic, uh, um, more realistic outcomes. There are a few, uh, few uh, examples in the literature uh, where we can find this type of analysis. And now I will move to another, another important topic, uh, which is related to the fact that 95% of the studies are, um, or they assume static conditions. 
But as we know, and the life cycle of the permit is, is, is quite long. It can last uh, 40 years, uh, 50 years. And there are a lot of dynamic factors during this time. We have the traffic that can change. You have technological and technical changes. So we had in the past, um, or nowadays, still nowadays, uh, most of the asphalt plants run on electric run on natural gas, but there are already electric asphalt plants, as we have here some prototypes in, in Netherlands. Um, the materials also change, as well as the cultural and social norms. What was not acceptable or acceptable a few years ago is not uh, is not acceptable nowadays. And what is acceptable nowadays is gonna for sure is gonna change in the future. There are also uh, policies that can change. In the past, we you could not use RAP. Now we can use RAP. 30, 40 percent, depending on the places, and this percentage will for sure increase. And there are also uh, dynamic factors related to uh, the environmental modeling. So the uh, the effect of an emission that is released today is not the same of an emission that is released uh, uh, is going to be released in ten years or twenty years, and many others. Um, among those uh, those factors, only the traffic is, is commonly uh, considered as being dynamic. But this can be a, a model uh, mainly during the inventory uh, analysis, considering dynamic processes um, where potential for future developments, technology advances uh, can be incorporated in the in the process. That it can also be um, consider dynamic in the systems where potential for future change in the components of the system can be considered uh, by changing uh, between unit process or the behavior of the system model and also dynamic characterization factors. Um, then here, we already see some studies where the characterization factors are adjusted to reflect the difference in the temporal scale of the, um, the, the emissions. So in order to, to make sure that the change um, in the characterization factor um, for compensating the fact that um, the impact of the emissions that take place today is not the same that uh, will take place in the future. There are also some good examples, but there is not one single study as far as I know that uh, that consider all of those um, uh, dynamic factors. The most common are the traffic and also the characterization factors, but only for the uh, global warming score. So now I'm gonna move to the emerging trends and here I'm, I'm gonna zoom out a bit from uh, the permanent LCA. Some of the topics are related to permanent LCA. Others, all other uh, trends are um, more related to the LCA methodology in general, but of course they will also have a, an impact in the permanent LCA domain. So the first one is perspective LCA. Um, nowadays we are trying to develop new and ideally more sustainable materials. And, and um, it would be quite interesting to actually try to predict based on the results that we have, information that we have at laboratory scale, try to predict the performance of those uh, materials when they are uh, deployed uh, in the real world. So in the lab, we have a TRL of three or uh, four, and we would be interested in predict how the, the performance would be when they reach DRL 9, because this is the moment where we actually we can make changes at a relatively low cost. How can we do that? Actually, this, is, this can be done um, using a methodology that is called perspective LCA. It intends to evaluate the future, um, the future environmental performance of a product uh, while it is still at the early phase of, devel of development with a low TRL. 
This is based. This is uh, done basically by employing uh, upscaling methods to try to extrapolate, based on the information that we have at the lab scale, the actual performance in the real world. And this involves expert interviews, scenario modeling, analysis a lot, uh, usually also with uh, integrated assessment models, proxy simulations, and also uh, proxy data. Unfortunately, um, in the payment domain, there is not yet one single study uh, in the using a perspective LCA, as far as I know. So the other emerging trend is consequential LCA. Um, actually, um, I was I hesitated a bit between call it an emerging trend or a nice word because. Uh, um this is not this is not new but it's relatively new in the in our domain and some of the studies that are uh, done could be a consequential lca but let me explain you uh, there are two mainly uh, modeling approach attribution lca which describe um, the environmental uh, relevant impacts of an activities that contributes to a specific uh, um, product. And also we have the consequential LCA that describes um, how environmental relevance, the impacts will uh, uh, change in response uh, to change uh, in the um, um, an action or the decision. So the first one, try to allocate all the environmental impacts of the human, uh, humanity to a specific activity, while the second one try to describe how the impacts change as a, a response to a change uh, in the functional unit. So they they answer different questions. So the first one um, could be uh, could provide an answer to a question. Uh, for example, what are the environmental impacts related to the production of one ton of asphalt uh, concrete with 10% plastic recyclates? Well, a question uh, that can be answered with the consequential LCA could be how will the environmental impacts related to the production of one ton of uh, asphalt change when the percentage of plastic recyclates increase by 15%? So as you can see, there is a difference. Uh, the other or the second uh, approach is more suitable for uh, policy making. There are quite some difference between the two. Um, I would highlight the difference in the system boundaries because in the consequential LCA in the limit, my, there might be no system boundaries because we have to track all the flows that will uh, react to the change uh, in the uh, the change in the demand. Uh, maybe another point to mention: one use average data attribution LCA, while the other use uh, marginal data. And the allocation or the multifunctionality uh, is usually done with the uh, partitioning in attribution LCA. While in consequential LCA, this is uh, solved with the system expansion. There are a few, a few studies, um, consequential LCA. I tried along with some colleagues, I tried to explain how the use of uh, plastic uh, could be modeled from a consequential uh, perspective. There is also a very good study uh, by Milena. We are, uh, she already gave a, a nice presentation in the, one of the previous series, but this is a topic that remains to be explored in our field. All right, now let's uh, let's move uh, to the challenge. Um, the first one that I identify is related to the modeling of tire roadbed particles and microplastics in LCA, and to assess the impacts. Um, caused by these particles, we need to, there are two important steps that are needed. The first is the definition and the quantification of uh, uh, those particles, the emission of those particles, 
While the second step is the, um, the estimation of their fate in the environment. What happens once they are released? Do they get uh, trapped in the soil or they they move from the air to the to the uh, to the water? What type of water, the rivers and ocean and so on? So in the in the impacts assessment, we have basically what we do is we assign the flows that are identified in the inventory to different uh, impact categories. So this process of identifying which flows influence uh, the impact, it's uh, called uh, classification. While the quantification of the magnitude of the contribution of those flows to the impact category, it's called characterization. The ongoing research, which is uh, uh, this is a very new it's a, a new topic. It's um, under very uh, under development, and this ongoing research it's mainly concerned with the identification of those flows, which flows represent better those particles, and also uh, develop of the characterization factors. It says how much they will contribute for uh, the common, not only the common uh, impact categories, but in some studies, they are proposing a uh, new impact categories. So here they, I'm trying to uh, show the main studies that are addressing uh, this uh, challenge. The first paper, the one in the upper, um, upper bottom left corner, it's a, very interesting research project uh, that is ongoing. There is a website uh, that you can check to, to know more about what they are doing. This is just a publication about some of the most recent outcomes. There are a lot of gaps and challenges. Some of them are related with inventory, uh, such as the fact that the mechanisms and the process and factors that are influencing the the release of those particles are still not well known and, uh, and also understood. This uh, leads to the need for uh, inventory flows uh, that actually uh, address the, the, the emission of those particles in the different environmental uh, compartments, soil, uh, water, and air. There is also a need to account for the multiple attributes of those particles, the size, the form, the type, uh, chemical composition, and so on. And also um, we need special and temporal sensitive inventory data, data uh, to perform accurate assessments. In terms of impact assessment, transference, uh, transference factors between the different, the different compartments are needed. There is also a, needed, uh, a need for a standardized approach to address uh, the degradability uh, within the different compartments and the modeling of the ecological and uh, health impacts of those particles, it's, it's quite complex. The second challenge that I'm here sharing with you uh, relates to the modeling of the urban Italian effects in, in LCA. So urban Italian, uh, Italian effects take place during the use phase of the payment uh, commonly. And this, uh, it represents an increase of the temperature in urban areas in relation to the surroundings. The most comprehensive study um, uh, was done by Sen during uh, his PhD. Uh, he quantified the effects of the payment characteristics uh, and translate them uh, in the global warming potential. However, it didn't account for the effect of um, the urban Italian on ecosystems and human health. There are some quite recent uh, work that was uh, that is ongoing. And what they did was they come up with a new uh, elementary flow, which is this, this delta T or delta temperature that is actually, um, that is used to uh, character or to represent urban Italian. This is a complete, a complete different flow because commonly we have only uh, airborne and uh, also um, uh, solid particles and, and energy. 
but not in the in in, in this sense. They also propose, uh, in this case, Suska and Poponi propose a new uh, impact categories, which is called local global warming. And more recently, another study by Chesa and Suska, they estimate the impact of this midpoint uh, impact categories in the damage ecosystem in endpoint impact categories. But the answers that we uh, that we need are much more, uh, or the questions that we have are much more than answers that we currently uh, have. In terms of challenge and gaps, and using the same uh, the same structure in the inventory, um, the capturing of the contribution of uh, the payments to the urban talent is quite challenging uh, due to the complex interaction between the urban uh, morphology, uh, local climate. Um, there is also second order effects, such as the fact that um, the increase in temperature will lead to uh, chemical reactions that in turn will have an impact in other categories. Uh, the urban talents, uh, they can change depending on the the local and also the time within the city and capturing this uh, variability at an appropriate resolution can be quite data hungry and computationally expensive. In terms of impact assessment, um, the quantification of those isolated effects in the um, individual impact categories is it's quite difficult due to lack of data the indirect impacts on the other environmental aspects, as I mentioned before, and also due to the fact that the urban talent are assessed with temperature-related indicators. And this um, leads to additional challenge because our softwares and um, databases are not adapted to incorporate this type of flows. And finally, uh, separating local effects from global effects uh, is also a very difficult process. Another challenge uh, relates to the evaluation of biodiversity in LCA. So biodiversity is a variety of life on earth that includes the, the ecosystem, the species and the genes. If you, are, if you pay attention to the news, you for sure you already came across with news related to uh, the decrease or the loss of biodiversity. Uh, I had prepared this presentation, I finished uh, a few days ago and today I, I updated because this new report uh, just was published uh, today saying that uh, a few uh, plants and fungi are in risk of extinction. So LCA uh, actually can be um, has the potential to account for the biodiversity, but it's, um, it's not uh, already quite developed uh, to be properly uh, considered. There are several ongoing studies, but also as in the previous case, um, there are a lot of challenge and gaps that needs to be addressed. I try here to summarize some of them. And the first one uh, relates to the fact that most of the indicators focus on species diversity and ecosystem diversity, while uh, genetic uh, diversity is, uh, is not commonly taken into account. There is also a mismatch between the special resolution of the impact assessment models and the special resolution of the, the data that we have. There is also a lack of consideration of the broader spectrum of drivers of the biodiversity um, in the different impact assessment methods. My, basically, uh, land use, it's uh, the only one that is commonly considered, but you also have climate change, pollution, um, exploitation, and also the evasive uh, species. There is also a, a a lack of a common framework that integrates all of those um, uh, data sets and models in a seemingly uh, way. 
And the characterization factors are uh, sensitive to multiple sources of uncertainty and address them. It's, it's also uh, quite challenging because we don't have data. Uh, the last challenge and that I want to point out uh, relates to the integration of LCA into optimization-based decision support system for payment management system. I can hear the challenge are also um, 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 different and varied. We have a, one challenge that is re related to the LCA or the integration of the LCA with the PMS. Should we be really embedded or should we stay as a standalone uh, tool that uh, is connected to some extent and it runs in parallel that is called when, when needed? or should also actually be embedded to be part of uh, the, the PMS. And then when we also uh, wanted to use for uh, design optimal maintenance and rehabilitation strategies, there are multiple uh, challenges uh, related to actually the computational uh, power that is uh, needed to uh, consider um, or to perform the analysis depending on the level of granularity that we want. So doing an analysis where we consider an analysis period of five years, is not the same as uh, for 20 years. It also changed depending on uh, the, the number of um, uh, degradation models that we consider, also the number of treatments that are available for selection, the number of objective uh, functions, so all of this um, adds to uh, the complexity. And uh, I think uh, I'm already uh, almost, or already actually uh, exceeded the 30 minutes. So I will just finish with some points for future notation. We have digitalization, automation, uh, internet of things, AI, this already has an impact in the, in the way that we do LCA and it will be even more in the future. It will be particularly useful for inventory, but also for developing the impact assessment models, models for doing a real time life cycle assessment as it is already done in other sectors. Uh, I think the future will also uh, um, involved integration uh, with also with other life cycle thinking and industrial ecology methodologies such as such as material flow analysis in addition to the actual um, integration with the social life cycle assessment and life cycle costs the most common in the case of life cycle costs the most common life cycle thinking methodology in our domain. Uh, I think operational resource methodologies such as optimization um, will also be important. They are already important, but as we uh, have access to more computational power, uh, some of the drawbacks uh, and the limitations that I mentioned before will be addressed. So, and of course, this will also be um, uh, um, positive for the use of LCA in our domain. Integration with the payment, payment design and, man, and management systems also related to um, the, the topics that I mentioned. In my opinion, LCA will be as important as, or also, and also as common as life cycle costs. So life cycle costs is one of components the, the current PMS LCA will be for sure in the future as well. Um, open source, uh, software in database. I think this the future will also uh, pass by these important components that are already um, interesting uh, initiatives. In this case, mainly in US uh, with the data commons and um, now recently with the new will to produce, um, if, to collect data to produce APDs, all of these will lead to open databases. But for me, the, the most important is still education and communication. So as a um, researcher or academics, we crush the numbers, 
we we got the numbers, but someone else will use the numbers that we get to make decisions. And if we are not uh, able to communicate in the the correct way or the best way our results, uh, this will have an impact in the quality of uh, the decisions that are made based on those results. And education is also important. It's quite important for me. It's even it's the most important point uh, in this in this list uh, because there is a huge nowadays there is a huge demand for LCA specialists, and sometimes people came to me and. They ask me, can you teach me something or can you teach me how to do an LCA? And I said, of course I can. I'm happy to do that. How much time do you have? Uh, half, well, half a day because I don't think I need that much time. I already play with the tool. I, I, I watch some tutorials and uh, I already, I, I know quite a lot. So of course, <laughs> it's, it's not like that, unfortunately. And uh, that's it. Um, Thank you very much. And um, I'm, I'm now happy to take all of your questions. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, there, there will be some news uh, related to some of the challenge that I mentioned here. Hopefully some publications uh, related to those topics. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to, to know your opinion about what I said uh, before. Um, so please uh, feel free to contact me. And also now I'm, of course, open to take any other questions. Thank you so much for the nice presentation. Uh, I'll open now for, for questions. Uh, does anyone in the room have a question for Professor Santos or on Zoom? Uh, yes. Um, thank you, Professor, for the presentation. Um, in one of the challenges regarding the impact assessment, you mentioned that there is a need for transfers, transfer factors between compartments. Could you please explain what you meant by that? Um, what I mean here is that uh, the impact assessment the, or the impact of those uh, particles are determined by their fate, where they end up. And so some impacts are more related to atmospheric effects, others concerns the soil and others uh, the water. Uh, they can be uh, marine, but also rivers. And the fact that they, as they are released in the, in the pavement, right? But then they are captured by the, uh, the um, water collection systems and they might end up in the soil that is uh, located immediately uh, next to the road, but they also might end up um, in the a given uh, stream of water and they might actually be deposit some uh, kilometers away from the local. So the fact that they are moving from one compartment to the another, make it difficult to make it difficult to actually quantify the impacts, because as I said before, some impacts are related to soil, others to atmosphere, and others to water, and they can change. They can change their location. Have any more questions in the room or on Zoom? Yeah, I had one more question about EPDs. Um, could you please tell us like the best stages of EPDs like in Europe regarding like asphalt binder production and asphalt mixtures? Um, in my opinion, US is uh, more advanced in this domain than Europe. I think with this uh, well, the, before this new bill, this new bill, there was already some initiatives going on and. Uh, promoted by the Sustainable Payment uh, Consortium or group from the Federal Highway. But uh, this was uh, reinforced uh, recently with this new bill, new bill. In Europe, we don't have the same um, type of uh, leadership and incentives to create EPDs.
we have some, of course, all the countries have their own uh, EPDs, but we don't have the same uh, the same number and also the same uh, support uh, supportive environment. I have one very quick question, Professor. Uh, when you mentioned the performance of uh, borrows mixtures with RAP, uh, does it account also for the performance during during time? Because we have like this common sense that uh, mixtures like SMA and borrows mixtures that use RAP are not as well performing as other ones. And we still have like a much better uh, scenario or uh, for for the rap mixes. Does that consider performance? Yes. Yeah. So the fact in this case, um, it also have will have an impact in the of course the uh, the degradation and it might lead to the need of uh, more frequent treatments or more robust treatments if you want to keep the same number the same uh, um, number and this the timing of interventions and this needs to be also considered of course in the definition of the functional unit so uh, almost 10 p.m now in netherlands so we have to thank you so much professor for uh being here with us today so we really appreciate your time and your very nice presentation so let's give a round of applause <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, I had to cut uh, a lot of uh, items because much more could have been said about the challenge and also uh, the icebergs, but I tried to keep it within the time available. But feel free to uh, to reach out to me and I'm, I'm more than happy to engage in discussions and conversation about these and any other um, any other points that you would like to to explore once again thank you very much uh, it was really a pleasure in my evening with you bye bye <laughs>